One of the most common questions I get from the introductory Photoshop course, Art 1280, is where do I get Photoshop files from? And you can get images to use in Photoshop in a number of places. You can start off by creating your own images from scratch. If you choose the file menu in the top left hand corner of your screen and choose new, you can create new images and you can create them whatever size and dimension uh, that you need for whatever your particular output device uh, entails. The output could be a photo printer, a commercial offset lithography printer, screen printer. It could even be you're creating something for the web or for a digital billboard. But whatever you need, you could set up the file to make sure it has those parameters when you start. You can find uh, images that you've captured or you've gotten off the internet, and you can convert them to be Photoshop files. So if you can open them, file open, like we opened that pink picture from Edmonton of the flowers, um, you can convert it to be a Photoshop file. Um, but you can also open existing files if, if you have them. Now, some of you probably have a little bit of Photoshop experience and you're probably saying to yourself, well, why do I have to open a file and save it and convert it as a Photoshop file? I would like you to get in the habit of anytime you're in Photoshop, working in a Photoshop file format, a .psd Photoshop file. Images that you get off of your digital camera or off the internet might be JPEG or PNG files. Um, some of you who are a little more fancy with your cameras, maybe you consider yourself a photographer, you might have raw file formats and things like that. Um, I would like you to get into the habit of always converting whatever image you start with to be a working file, which we're going to say is going to be a Photoshop file. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I have that image open of the image from the flowers from Edmonton. Um, I don't want to work in this file because um, if I, I'm going to zoom in here, but I'm not sure if it's going to work in the video. If I zoom in and I look at the top left hand corner of the the workspace. I can see that I've opened the Edmonton Canada 193.jpg image. It's displaying at 66.7% of its actual size and it is a RGB um, image. I don't want to work in a JPEG file format because I, as someone who knows how to use Photoshop, I know that a JPEG file format has compression, which means that every time I save the file, the file format is going to try to make um, the file size as small as possible. It's going to compress the file. And a JPEG is a web file format, so especially this type of file format is going to try to compress the file by throwing data out because the JPEG wants the smallest file size possible because it's meant to display on the web. And web images have to be small so they load fast. Um, it's called lossy compression. There's two types of compression, lossless and lossy. A JPEG has lossy compression. So the first thing that I want to do before I do any editing in this photo is I want to convert it to be a Photoshop file. I'm going to choose File Save As to do that. The reason I'm doing that, not to kind of repeat myself over and over again, is because it's going to be considered a working file. I don't want to destroy the original. What if I start editing this and I mess up really badly and then I say, I, I just want to get back to the original picture. If I edit it over the original, I can't get back to the, the first version. I may have saved and closed out and I won't be able to hit edit undo. So saving as and changing your file from a JPEG to, I'm just going to toss mine on the desktop for now, uh, from a JPEG to a Photoshop file allows you to make sure that you keep that original JPEG just in case you kind of mess stuff up. But also when you save it as a Photoshop file, so I'm going to choose the first one at the top of this drop down here. Um, if your save as dialog box is not large like mine is, it's probably collapsed. And I have a pet peeve about this. Um, anytime you see a down arrow, I think you should hit it and expand your window just so you see what your options are. I am a visual person, so I visually want to see that I'm saving this on the desktop and that I'm saving it as a Photoshop file and I want to see what my options down here are. So I'm going to change my photo to be, instead of a JPEG, which has lossy compression, I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file so that, one, I'm not losing data every time I save with a JPEG. Two, I am making a copy of the original so that if I mess up horribly, I can always go back to that original. But most importantly, number three, if I use a Photoshop file format, I am guaranteed that whatever I do in Photoshop, this file format can save it. It's considered the native file format for Photoshop. So Microsoft Word has a native file format as a .doc file, and Adobe InDesign has a .indd file. Those native file formats, are, or the file format that you will save your project as if you just hit File Save on a new document, 
uh, will allow you to perform everything that that software could do. And so if I save it as a Photoshop file, I'm guaranteed that no matter what menu I click or what filter I apply, that the Photoshop file can save it and it can handle it. And when I open up the file the next time, it will still be there. So I would like you to take a minute and choose File, Save As. Save a copy of whatever image you opened for this lecture and change it to be a Photoshop.psd file.